four months later and we're back. The supercharger's been over at John Bond Performance getting rebuilt and whatever other nonsense. They put their nice little sticker on here, a nice little plaque. It has been oil filled already. It's in nice condition. They taped off all of the ports. Good company, good quality. And then we got back our rotors that came out of the thing. These things are all chewed up like you guys saw in the last video. And they also sent off all the bearings I guess, in case we wanted some extra crap. I've gone through and organized all of the remaining parts that we need to install. Went ahead and made a checklist of everything that needs to be done. And we're going to start reassembling. So I'm trying to get my bearings back about me because it has been a bit since I've uh, worked on this last, you know, like I said, four months ago. So uh, basically it's going to be throw the supercharger back in, connect the belt, connect all the hoses, make sure everything works uh, as far as the supercharger coolant system goes, get all of the required stuff into the engine bay, then I'm going to worry about where to put the oil filter and sensor assembly, then we'll worry about routing all the lines in order to make that work. Uh, it's kind of the basic portion of it. It's made its way into the engine bay. Use RTV because whenever you have one of these two fives, standard gasket won't work. The ports are too big on the two five heads, so use RTV. And uh, whenever I install these, I try to lift them up to make sure we get the maximum coverage on the top side. Because uh, there is a bit of play on the bolts to allow the supercharger to go up and down. So lift it up on it to make sure we got uh, a good lip on top with the RTV. The EGR has already been connected back there. EGR has been tightened down on both the bolt side and on the uh, well, I guess on the, the EGR nut side, if you want to call it that. But to change out the injectors, the customers supplied some ID, I think, 1050s. Yes, ID 1050s. We're going to go ahead and slap those on there. And got the power steering pump just sort of floating here in place. There is a bit of interference right here, so I'm going to shave back a little bit of this right, right there. I'm going to shave a little bit of this so we don't have interference with the belt, and then we'll be able to have that permanently installed. Meanwhile, I've also installed the hoses across here. This over to here, that over to there, clamped it. Let's see, on this side, I did run the same tube that they had before for the PCV. It was already preformed to the shape, I guess from the heat of running the supercharger previously. That's under, uh, that's under there, it's already got a clamp on it on the underside. And then we have the wiring harness that said, and the instructions route it through here. So we have that here, and we're going to put on the fuel rail That'll be the end of the work for today. We're installing these injector dynamics injectors. It's not ID's fault. It's uh, it's sort of the Fly Miata Cosworth rail. But injector number two, I actually couldn't orient it any way this direction to be plugged in. So due to the injector dynamics angle of their connector, I had to push this these connectors off to the side. So the rear two point kind of rearward. The front one points kind of forward. The middle one has this goofy block thing. So I actually had to plug the stupid thing in down here. So, sorry for the person who has to unplug that one. Got the intake elbow installed, and uh, I wanted to bring attention to this. This is what I had noticed on the disassembly, and I had noted it. This guy got damaged because of the strut tower race that was on here. So, I cleaned it up to where there's no sharp edges on it anymore, or at least it's a, it's a lot smoother of edges. But the barb is essentially only on the bottom half. Shouldn't be a problem. This thing is only under vacuum. We won't see boost in the uh, intake elbow, of course. Now, due to this thing having stock motor mounts and it being a two and a half liter, I did have problems with clearance over here. So I had to bend this guy up, stuck it in the vise, bend it upward. There will be no uh, shock tower brace on this anymore. Uh, as well as the one that was on here was the reason that this thing got damaged uh, in the two liter configuration. So definitely not working here. I went through and I cut my clearance here for the belt. It's a nice and clean looking machine surface. So you got these fancy aluminum bits. Yeah, get you a set of these. They they are much better for aluminum than trying to use your standard steel bits. Went ahead and worked on a little bit of the plumbing over here. This stuff is all sorts of a mess just because you know you got your fuel line, you have your heater line, evap, brake booster, the PCV, and then your AC line all having to run through this little area over here. It is an absolute mess. Fortunately, the heater line and the AC line have no problems up here. This isn't an issue running across there and having bent this up, still not an issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and install all the cowl stuff. Uh, Zero Limit has not sent me the intake, the cold air intake for this yet. So this area will end up being pretty well open because it'll just be the, the tube here. Then we need to work on how to deal with this battery being in here because 
we do have a battery box. He had the, an engine bay battery. And then I gotta figure out where I'm gonna hide this guy. One of these Gates hoses, unmodified, 28470. This is the one I took off of the car. This is the one when this used to be mounted up against back there. But since it's moved far forward, I needed to get an unmodified one, so now this fits around the battery box. So, uncut on this end, and I just cut off, you know, about an inch and a half off of this end. Now we can install the battery box. The customer asked me to take a look at this headlight, see what I could do with it. It actually looks like the light assembly inside of there is sitting wrong. Looks like it's kind of falling in. So I pulled this off a moment ago, and earlier, you know, we saw some of these wires dangling down. But I found something interesting when I pulled this down out of here. There's a whole bunch of this wiring nonsense going on here. This wire was attached to the pin over here. Uh, just one pin, not both. And then this is melted out. So I think we're kind of SOL when it comes to this. I, I don't even know if I can glue this back together. This is kind of bad. Meanwhile, I removed one of the horns. Customer approved me to remove one of the horns. He said he didn't need both of them before. He doesn't need them both now. So we're just going to leave the one wired like it was before. But I'm going to move it up and more out of the way. And then for the bracketry, Gannon welded this up for me. This is going to bracket in over here. I got to drill out some holes and some riv nuts. But this will hold our filter assembly over there uh, securely down in this area so I can hook up all of those lines. And then I'm also gonna be installing the LRB under tray under here. I use the plastic one just for mock-up, but I got an LRB one that I'm gonna stick on here uh, so I can modify it. Uh, this thing's not gonna be structural enough with the amount of modification I'm gonna have to do for all of the hosing and plumbing and stuff. So the LRB being made out of plate aluminum will work a lot better. We come up with a nice bracket. This thing's sturdy as hell. This thing's gonna bolt up right here. I put in two riv nuts into the, the frame here, and then we're gonna use the existing bolt hole on the underside. Got the LRB on here, or at least just the uprights. But this will bolt right onto there, and then we'll hang the filter here. This will be sturdy. This thing is rigid. I may have pulled a uh, short-sided one here. This line is gonna end up being so tight that it can't reach over to here. So we're gonna have to relocate the oil cooler over that way. I figure I have about three or four inches that I can move it that way before it starts becoming an obstruction for airflow through these guys. So uh, we're gonna relocate the bolt holes on this guy to move it over. I'm gonna see if maybe I can get some short radius, or I mean uh, tight radius versions of these. Meanwhile, I've already run these lines. They run through the wheel well, non-obstructively around the frame. Let's see if I can get it at, on photo, there you go. And then they just run into the side of the motor where they're supposed to be. Got the sensors hooked up. The bracket looks really nice. It is solid. Like, look at that. Zero flex. Like, I could probably hang off of this. Got Loctite on all the bolts. Make sure this doesn't come loose. But, yeah, I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to move it over. And then we should be able to get this thing to where I can finagle some lines over to it. Meanwhile, uh, uh, we have a hold up on getting the air intake for this. Manufacturer says they can't get us one for at least another couple of months. Well, it's already been, I think, four plus months since we ordered it. So we're just gonna have to eat it and put in the Fly Miata original air box, which sucks. Oh well, I tightened up these wires over here and looped them up. These are the ones for the sensors. So those run over here, blah, blah, blah. The, uh, the headlight, the headlight is an adventure. So the customer asked me if I could possibly fix the headlight. In a lot of cases, some people try to replace their bulb and they damage that, the place where it connects into. This one looks like it's been displaced. You can see it's off center, but check this out. What the hell happened here? This is all melted out. And then this is all melted out down here. And then this is melted out down here. Like this isn't, this isn't like someone cut it. This is very clearly melted. So I don't know what the hell happened here, but it's not like I can just glue a light bulb back in here. Like I said, some people, when they go to install these, they'll break the little tab off and it's, oh, okay, we'll just glue the bulb in there. And then whenever it comes time next time, you replace the whole housing. Well, this, this one's going straight to just replace the whole housing. My uncertainty is that all of this weird wiring stuff is going on here. This wire was directly connected into the pins of the, uh, the turn signal light, as well as I guess this one probably was as well, but the only one that was actually connected when I got in there was this. And then of course the main headlight was on this beautiful wiring thing. Yeah, it's gonna be a fire hazard to say the least. Cool. 
Well, yeah, so oil filter, and then uh, once we get those lines, we can actually fill this thing with oil and spin the motor over, make sure we got no leaks. The coolant system is all sealed up. We should be able to test that. As you can see, the battery box is in here, and those lines are, are very nice around the back side there, running all over here. That's it, that's it, that's it. The oil cooler over two and a half inches, almost on the dot. So we're gonna be able to do straights here. Went ahead and ordered some low profile 90s for this and that'll get us pretty well lined up for this. So I have minimal amount of bending to these 10 ANs. I'm gonna end up slicing off this portion of the LRB under tray, just because that line's gonna have to run, of course, there. No point to having this at all after that. We're, we're probably not even gonna be able to run this shield that goes here. But uh, yeah, you can see my relocation. So I had a hole there, that's where it was mounted and I moved it over. Same on that one, of course. And once again, red Loctite, make sure none of this ever comes off. Today. So these are my tight radius 90s. Got my 10 AN on there. So that's a nice fitment. Let's see the uh, LRB speed. I went ahead and cut that back, smoothed it out so it's not a rough edge. We're actually clear to fill this thing up with oil since I already have the other lines run. So I'm gonna fill it with coolant, fill it with oil, put an air filter on this, and we actually should be able to fire it up. Go ahead and put almost a gallon of coolant into this. And I ran the pump for a little bit since we've now connected the battery. Got the snap-on filler, uh, filling in the coolant into the, uh, well, coolant system. And then I guess we can go ahead and run it. Oh, I did put six and a half, um, six and a half quarts of oil into it, so we'll see how that works. Usually if I put these large oil coolers on here, it's something like between six and a half to eight quarts, depending on the line system. So I went on the low side since lines are actually kind of short compared to the other ones we've built. Again. So Brian here took care of rewiring the headlights. We also got a replacement headlight, so used one customer supplied. But we went through, we got some pigtails off of Amazon. So we have appropriate pigtails to plug in all of the lights. And then Brian reverse engineered the massive wiring mess that was here, put on six pin ditch connectors, and now all the lights work, as we'll demonstrate. signals work also cool it's actually been about five months I think since this front bumper was on this car maybe closer to six months at this point but the front ends back on because now we have all the lights working and everything everything fit nicely behind the the bumper all of the all the coolers and all everything I have everything I need to under the hood in order to get this thing running uh, obviously we will put on an air filter and hook up his very important sound system but we just got the tune in from Zero Limit. We're ready to fire this up. Very scary. Let's fire it up. Well, it runs. Okay, so I put the car back on the ground now. First time it's been on the ground and I think, uh, like I said, five or six months. So the customer had a couple of concerns about various things before it came in. Uh, such as a wheel speed sensor, something about the transmission, a couple of other things. So some of those things we attribute to how the engine was running with a couple of problems. And just for grins, I went ahead and plugged in for live data and I spun the wheels manually before I put it on the ground. All of them read linear data uh, up to five miles an hour because that's about as fast as I can spin a wheel. But now that I put it back on the ground, we're gonna put it outside, we're gonna let it run for a while. We'll check the transmission fluid level. I'll put that air filter back on and then we'll be able to take it out for a test drive after we're sure the transmission fluid is good. Ta-da, car made it outside. So we did encounter a weird issue when I pulled it outside. I got it out here into the parking lot and then all of a sudden, before I could even get it into this parking spot, you know, doing my U-turn, it just shut off on me. And it didn't want to start back up. Like it was just as if it either had way too much fuel or way too little. We're gonna go with way too much. So I'm hoping we get it to pop some sort of check engine light before I go diving in to try and diagnose anything. It did fire up with uh, some, some push on the gas pedal, but then after about another five minutes, it just shut off on me again. And both times it smoked out of the, the uh, exhaust pipe pretty heavily after starting back up. So uh, we're gonna see about uh, taking care of the transmission level. I'm gonna check the oil level. The coolant, uh, I'm gonna top off a little bit more there because it burped a little bit. But uh, we'll see how it goes after I take it for a drive. 
just to see if anything is uh, improving after the tune. Meanwhile, everything appears to be working. We had oil pressure, we had oil temperature, the oil got up to temperature, the oil got up to pressure, we saw good numbers. And that's about it for now. Got the car up on a lift running, I just topped off the transmission a little bit. It took uh, less than half a quart, and then, uh, well, it was full, so that was good. We're up to temperature, uh, the scan tool over here was reading at like a 135-ish, we're still at 138. Spec says, check temperature before you hit 140, well, we checked it. All right, so let's take a look under here. We haven't had a nice look under here yet. So we have our heat exchanger, our trans cooler, our oil cooler, our oil cooler lines, our oil filter, nice and tucked up in there with the pressure and temperature sensors mounted on top where you can't see them right now. We have our Goodwin Triple Pass CSF radiator, the big one. Then lines run over here through the wheel well and up there to a mountain to relocation plate. No leaks visible as for now. And hopefully it'll stay that way. The exhaust burned off a couple of, uh, well, as I said earlier, it burned off some stuff out of the out of the tips as well as it's been burning off from outside. You can still see some shininess on some of the piping from when the motor exploded and, you know, threw oil everywhere. You can even still see some of the oil stains on the underside. Stuff isn't drying up because, you know, oil doesn't dry like that. Anyway, we're gonna get this thing out. We're gonna take a test drive. Right next to it, we just finished a bunch of routine maintenance and the clutch job on that one. We're gonna throw some cams into it. We're gonna get this LRB speed under tray working. So because of all the coolers and stuff and all of the lines, we can't use the piece that goes here, but I did put the one over on this side because it doesn't interfere. The problem I noticed though, is since he did an NC1 front bumper conversion, the fender liners are incorrect. And that would explain why they were eaten up by the wheels or by the, by the tires and also weren't fitting well with the front bumper. We did make a bracket to hold on the oil cooler really sturdy. So this is now not gonna wiggle around at all. The thing is that does create a bit of a problem with the LRB speed or, or with any under tray. So we have on this, this uh, higher density foam stuff I put across the bottom of the radiator and then I made a modification to the LRB speed under tray where it's supposed to go for my X-brace. And then also I put softer foam here because this is gonna press up against the bottom of the condenser. This should help us with our airflow. So after we install this, we'll be able to take it out for our test drive. The under tray is now installed. So thanks to LRB for including clips so that the front end can be secured using the M6s instead of the stock, like you know, sheet metal screws or plastic screws. So we take a look in here, we got nice insulation holding up against there so that'll that'll stay sealed. I will I will want to put in a, a wheel well liner because well that's an oil filter and this is still a tire that's gonna be throwing crap. It'll be okay for our test drive, just not for the long term. Now you can definitely see those have been eaten up and I I would be I would definitely blame that on the fact that they weren't able to be secured on the bottom well, so they would have been flapping around. 